Stay tuned for details at the end of this video how you could win your own stainless steel seamless belt. Hi, I'm Carl and welcome to NAC 3D Designs. In today's episode, All About Belts, we're going to talk about, well, everything about the belt I chose for the White Knight. Why I chose it, the factors that led into why I chose it, and hopefully answer every question that I've gotten over the last few months. And hey, if I don't answer your question, leave a comment below. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to cover is why did I choose stainless steel over some of the other options that are out there? And let's cover just a couple of those. Uh, some companies are using PEI sheet or cap on tape, you know, wrapped around to itself. Others using painter's tape. One company is using a carbon fiber reinforced kind of rubber, I think. Uh, I wanted to find something that would transfer heat well would hold its shape well and of course would be flexible enough to make a belt. I looked at the, what we're using currently in the market and flex plate systems seem to be at the top of the, the food chain right now. And well, what are they? They're a hardened stainless steel flex plate with some sort of adhesive covering put on. You can fold them nicer or bend them, I should say, nice around. Prints will pop off and yet they'll lay down flat again. So what's the difference between stainless steels? This is hardened stainless steel. You can take it, you can carefully roll it up. These do have sharp edges, so be careful. That's why I'm wearing gloves. And yet, they will lay back flat again. This here is just stainless steel foil. My first attempt at trying to save everybody money by going with a cheaper Chinese supplier. They shipped it to me rolled up, and well, it wants to roll itself right back up. If you bend the edges, they kind of hold their shape. As you can see here, the edges are all crinkled and creased. Every time it's gotten bumped, it puts another crease in it. And well, as Midnight Giant found out on the original prototype that I used this on, after a while they start to stretch and the edges start to curl and well, it wasn't pretty. So if we stick with a hardened stainless steel, it doesn't develop a memory. It wants to stay in its natural form, which is flat. So now the trick came to finding a supplier. All right, so in searching for a supplier, I went on the internet and like everybody, I typed in a few simple keywords. I looked for stainless steel conveyor belts. Uh, started looking a little further, found some food grade stuff, looked all around. Found a few websites that showed potential, and I emailed it off to some companies. Only heard back from very few. Most of the ones I heard back from were quoting hundreds of dollars for just a flat piece, not a seamless belt. Once I started asking them for seamless belts, the prices started getting up into the $1,000 range, which was way out of my price range. Finally, I heard back from Belt Technologies. Now, Belt Technologies was nice enough to start ask, actually taking the time to ask some questions. What are you trying to do? What are you making? So I sent them some pictures and talked it on the phone a few times and through emails and described the product and what I was trying to do. And they answered back, well, what are the specifications you need? I said, to be honest, I don't know. I'm, you know, This is new for me too. What do you recommend for the size and type of you know, application I'm using? They made their recommendations suggested the belt that I got, and then gave me some quotes. Now, unfortunately for me, yes, the first quotes, a seamless belt still was not practical. So I said, hey, just send me the material. They sent me a flat piece of fully hardened stainless steel, and I put it together like I did with this sample here with just aluminum duct tape. It held well. It did the job. I put my coating over it, and... It made it through the prototype stage and it worked great. Now, unfortunately, over time, I've discovered I can't tighten the belt down a lot because it will start to stretch that aluminum tape and the build tack that's over top of it. And then it gets really hard to keep the belt tracking straight. So I went back to Belt Technologies, explained to them, hey, you know, I've got the prototype out there. People love it. I'm, I'm starting to work with printed solid to produce kits. I, I need a production belt. What kind of price can you give me on a welded seam belt and they came back with some prices and I really wasn't sure about it still and they said look let, let us get you one we want you to go with the end product the finished product which is a seamless belt what they make 
So, Belt Technology sent me a completely seamless stainless, hardened stainless steel belt. You can just barely see the weld line right here where they fuse the two ends together. Running your finger across it, you can barely feel that it's there. And in short, yes, it is one continual loop, no seams. Now I put it on the printer and I tested it out. Tightened it up, it tracks straight, it tracks true. As you can see, it's still round, it's still true, it's not curling anywhere, there's no creases in it. It's exactly what we want to be applying something like build tack to. All right, so next step was to decide what was I gonna coat the belt with? As we all know, printed filament really doesn't like to stick to metal that well, it's not reliable. There's lots of options out there. You could cover it with blue painter's tape. You could cover it with cap-on tape. You could even order really long PEI sheets. You can even send this out and have it PEI powder coated if you want to go that route. Now, I already had a working relationship with BuildTac. I talked to them before. I met Kayla. You might know her as BuildTac Chick at uh, Earth last year. And I'd seen her again at New York Maker Fair, and I'd talked to her a few times about it, and most of the conversation had been around, well, other people have tried it. It can't be done. Don't ever tell me it can't be done. That's a challenge. Now i got to prove those other people just didn't know what they were doing, and that's exactly what I did. I kept asking until finally she gave me a sample I could try. Let me move this out of the way. All right. So she sent me a sample, and I tried a few different seam ideas because I figured the problem they were having was, one, they were either trying to just use BuildTac by itself as a belt. Well, it's a kind of plastic, vinyl. It's going to stretch. Well, that's not going to work. You can't have it stretching. You're done it with curling. Your belt's going to get out of round. It's going to get out of dimension. It's not going to track right. It's just it's a recipe for disaster, which is why we put it on hardened stainless steel. That eliminates the stretching problem. Now the only problem left is making sure your seam doesn't split. So first time I tried it, I did a straight seam. And it does hold. It runs around. But if I leave the seam on the roller, yeah, I get a problem where it tries to lift. And I don't know if you can quite see it, but I can almost peel back this one corner. So, all right, well, you're trying to roll that whole seam around the roller at the exact same time. Solution for that, put it at a 45 degree angle. Actually, put it at any angle. As long as you're not trying to roll the entire seam at one time, this one here I did at a 45. You run that thin bit around the edge and then let it spread across the roller as it goes. You don't have any one massive point of pressure trying to peel away. On my end product, when I took the angled cut, I only did it across 100 millimeters. So I took up a couple inches, and it works fine. It hasn't separated. It hasn't peeled up. Just that little bit of diagonal helps alleviate the pressure as it rolls around and doesn't make it want to peel back up off of the belt. So now we've got a working stainless steel belt with an adhesive surface that works well for 3D printing and releases well when it gets to the end of the belt and rolls off. So like I said... Now I've got a working product. Okay, now I just need to have a working product big enough to work on that huge stainless steel belt we just saw. So go back to BuildTac. Hey, all right, I've got it working. Here's a video. See, it's printing on BuildTac. It's rolling around the, the rollers. It works. Now I need it in 405 millimeters by two meters long. Now, up until this point, from what I heard, the biggest they'd ever gone was one meter by one meter square. So the initial response was, I don't think we can do that. I explained to Kayla, I said, look, I, I don't want any more seams. I need two meters. See what you can do. Well, a little while later, I heard back, we can do it. We're going to do it. And then we resulted in the world's largest build tech sheet, 405 meters by, well, you can't see all of it, but it's a full two meters long. It would be dangling on the floor right now if I didn't have it tipped over Star-Lord's head. Now the fun part, applying it to that belt. Now I'm sure there's some tint and vinyl guys out there going to tell me, oh, piece of cake. Good. You can come put them on for me. 
Unfortunately, I'm not that good, but there's this great product called Rapid Tat. So what I ended up doing was I did two feet at a time. I got the belt all lined up first, put the first two feet, spray it with Rapid Tack, and I squeegeed that out and let it set for two days. And then I just kept advancing the belt around until I had all of it, but those last 100 millimeters on each end done. I lined it up, I cut my straight line, and I did my diagonal seam. And that's how I put the belt together. All right, so I think I covered everything. I want to take a quick moment again to thank Belt Technologies for actually taking the time to respond to my emails, ask questions, and help me get the product I needed for my application. I want to thank BuildTac for going above and beyond and making the largest BuildTac sheet they'd ever made to date so we can have BuildTac on our belt printers going forward. Hopefully, I've answered all your questions. If I haven't, Please, as I mentioned before, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to help support the channel or future development of this project, there's a PayPal me link and an Amazon wish list in the description below, as well as a link for Teespring to order these cool new Check Your Infinite Z and our Infinite Possibilities t-shirts. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. All right, bet you thought I forgot. So the people at Belt Technologies were nice enough to donate a fully hardened stainless steel welded seam belt big enough to fit a full-size white knight. How do you enter to win? Well, now there's a few little rules to this. I want to be sure this belt goes to someone who's actually going to build a white knight. To do that, I've put my email in the description below. What I want you to do is I want you to take a picture of how far along you are building your white knight and send it to me. Once I receive that picture, I'll enter your name in a drawing to win this belt. What if you haven't started yet? Well, You've got a little bit of time. I'm going to announce the winner Saturday, October 12th while I'm at Earth. So get your parts together. Lay them all on a table. If you've got one almost assembled, great, whatever. Any level of completion will get you entered in the contest. I just want to see that you're working on one. So get your pictures to me and good luck.